Wait. Hey guys, welcome yet again to another video. This is a 2019 Tundra TRD Pro in Voodoo Blue. Uh, one year since we owned this car. Uh, one year later, uh, because of Chevy and Ford, we ended up with the Toyota. It's uh, not that Chevy or Ford is a bad car or a bad truck. It's just because Chevy came out with some weird number, uh, $66,666. And I don't buy cars. You know, when somebody comes up with a 666 number, superstition, whatever you want to call it, it was just not it's an meant to be. excuse not to get it. Yeah, it was an excuse not to get it. That's what I needed, an excuse. Um, the reason we don't, we're not driving a Raptor, because Ford decided to put in their top of the line truck a V6 engine. 3.6 cylinder, 3.6 liter. Since we're really interested in the Raptor, <laughs> we, need, we needed something to compare. We really like the Fox shocks and the wide body. But Toyota didn't make anything and Chevy didn't really make anything either. But all of a sudden, Toyota came out with this truck called the TRD Pro. Well, it's been out for a while, but 2019 had a special thing going on for it. They came out with this new color. It's all his fault. The reason I got this truck is because he wanted it. I, I forget what truck I was pushing. I was pushing for something else. The Raptor. is the Raptor. Yeah, the, yeah, I guess the Raptor. Yeah, I was pushing for the Raptor and you decided, no, no, no. And I guess I needed an excuse, and he was the excuse not to get the Raptor. We decided to take a look at it, and yeah, he insisted that that we go to just to look at it, to look at it, just to look. but they didn't have it, so we were the first ones at where that Great, dealership. Yeah, what's it? Grapevine it Toyota in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, north of Metroplex. Uh, the guys are super cool. Uh, as soon as I walked in, I told them I want to order it. They're like, oh yes, come this way. And we ordered, we're the first ones to order it at the dealership. And three months later, four months later? Yeah. Five months yeah. later? I don't know, whatever. We got the truck. And now, a year later, 11,610 miles later, we're gonna do a review on it. The good, the bad, the ugly. Some of the negatives about owning the Tundra. It's big. I think as an everyday driver, I guess you can get used, you can get used to just about anything. Um, um, parking it, you know, in, a, in, in some of these parking lots. Um, it's pretty much not an everyday driver. You wouldn't want to. Yeah, I mean, no, people do it. I mean, look at this. How many trucks are here, man? It's like Ford sells a million, a million a year almost, right about. Uh, F-150. So people use it as an everyday driver. I guess it can be used as an everyday driver. I don't know if I want to do it. Let me put this to this. wouldn't be my first choice as a daily driver. Um, cause it's, it, it's just big. It doesn't have front and rear sonar as we talked about that. It doesn't have, um, a proper, well, compared to the, the F, the F one fifties where they have the, uh, 360 view when you, when you, when you back up and stuff like that. Um, that's the only negative. It's not really a negative. It's just more of an, an annoyance, I would think. Uh -huh. You drove truck, it every day. On all highways from Colorado back, we got 17.1 miles per gallon. Yeah, right now the tank, because we drove it around town, it's 15.1, oh. but it, it typically stays around 16, 15, 16 miles per gallon on average. Another thing that the TRD Pro has that the normal Tundra doesn't is a big gas tank, a huge gas tank. Yeah, 38 gallons to be exact, which is, it makes it, so we went to Colorado, this thing is done four trips, five trips to Colorado. And with, we use Gas Buddy, I think the app where you can check where the cheapest gas is. <laughs> and you can actually save. I mean, we, we, we just we just got back yesterday from Colorado. We went up there skiing a couple days, um, driving this up in the snow and stuff and in the ice. Um, we've been up there in blizzards. Yeah, it was bad. Blizzards, I mean, I'm talking about you can't see more than two, three feet in front of you coming up through those passes. And uh, we'll, throw, we'll throw some video in because I think we have video of that. Some of that, uh, of our different trips when we went up to Colorado skiing, surfboarding, surfboarding, no, skiing snowboarding. And snowboarding. Skiing and snowboarding. Um, at nighttime, you know, with, I give it the rigid fox, the frigid um, uh, lights and stuff like that, even in blizzards. It was actually, and you know, I, I give most of it. To, to Michelin and the tires that, that's on here. It's original tires, we never change them. We will eventually, but for now, I mean, 
I decided just to keep the originals on there so I can get a base, you know, what original is versus some aftermarket stuff. We're gonna go with bigger and wider, obviously, right? Looks better. It looks better. It'll fill in the, um, the tire or the wheel well a lot better. But driving those through the ice and snow in the middle of the night, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning and blinding snow. I mean, you couldn't see more than, at times I had to stop. You had to physically stop because I couldn't see anything in front of me. Um, but uh, I, I never felt that I was like, the car never slid, I mean the truck, never slid. Not, not even, we pulled out a few people out of ditches uh, that night. A nice couple of nights, didn't we? Like twice. Um, and uh, it never once slid. I mean, okay, I mean, it'll slide if you're, you know, 50 miles an hour in a mountain pass, you know, doing a corner up there, like 90 degree corner, you don't go off the edge, right? But uh, just driving carefully and cautiously and slow. Um, it navigated, I didn't have to put chains on. It's really nice. It's chains really nice. Yeah, I, you know, I, I have chains. We have chains in the back if we needed them. Um, but uh, it was one of those things where it didn't, it felt sure-footed. And like I said, I attribute that mostly to Michelin and the tire selection that Toyota put on it originally. Um, wouldn't you say? Oh, and it has little, all Tundras have this, but it has a little selector from four-wheel drive high to four low and two-wheel drive. And this isn't like a uh, like weak four-wheel drive. It's like when you switch it, it's on and it won't, it stays on. It also affects turning radius. That's why we keep it in two-wheel drive all the time, but. Like other four-wheel drive cars, it only goes, only does four-wheel drive when you need it. But this is like all the time if you have it on. Yeah, it's a, it's an all-wheel drive that's on all the time. It doesn't like the temporary ones, the ones you can drive. So you basically have to have it on a slippery surface. Um, I don't think Toyota recommend. Maybe we should look in the manual, but I don't believe that they, they recommend driving around all the uh, time. All the time with four-wheel drive engaged because it's physically locks all the four tires together and. When you, when you turn, it'll go, tuka, 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 you know, I don't know if you know. It's not um, that good for understeer, I guess. Yeah, it's not, it's not recommended for driving on, on dry surfaces. Like, just pavement, like we're on now. Uh, dry pavement. But in snow and stuff like that, it's flawless. Some of the negatives, the biggest negative I have, it's all been with the dealership, right? I took it in for the first... Wow, where do I even begin with this? Um, all my problems have been with the dealership. In other words, uh, all right, so I went to get the oil, my first oil change, which is free. The first two years, I don't know, two free oil changes or something like that, I don't know. Um, I went in to get my 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 uh, first oil change free at Toyota. Uh, it wasn't Toyota Grapevine, maybe I should have gone there. And those guys do a better job. I've done a better job. Probably done a better job. Um, anyways, they ended up spilling oil all over the the TRD Pro has this huge um, aluminum skid plate, if you would, um, that um, protects the whole body uh, of the uh, of the truck, uh, the whole undercarriage. Uh, so they ended up spilling oil all over that thing, and of course they didn't clean it. Or they did a little bit, but it ended up making a big mess in the garage, yeah. on the floor. Um, it's all them. It, it, you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. Uh, from now on, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm just not gonna. I've I've always changed all my oil. Doesn't matter what it is. It's not that hard. Actually, not that hard. You should learn how. See. And well, maybe we'll do a video on that. How to change the TRD Pro. How to change oil in general. All the cars are the same. All the cars are the same. But maybe we'll do one on the TRD Pro. Yeah. Overall. I would get this truck if you want reliability. This is one of pretty much the most reliable truck you can get. That's why they take them out for Arctic exploration and stuff. If you want it as an everyday driver, it work well because reliability and turning radius, and has a lot of room in the back for passengers. In my opinion, this is one of the best road trip cars because of the room in the back. It's so nice to sleep back there. The cabs that are bigger are Dodge the Super Cabs, but. Who cares? It's pretty close. Yeah. Anyways, what are the negatives that I can think of? And like I said, they've all been dealership. Second dealership thing I had, and I told them, I physically told them, do not wash my truck. 
And when we, when we walk around the outside, I show you what they did. I told them don't wash it because they use those spinner spinner things. And of course, they they scratch do the do scratches on either side. So let me show you that. So we complained, and they gave us they got yeah. rid of all the dents on the truck. First. Yeah. So I I complained, <laughs> I complained, and they're like the uh, the manager, and you know. I specifically told the manager, do not wash my truck. It didn't need washing. It was perfectly clean. Don't wash my truck. And uh, they uh, like, yeah, 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 we're not gonna wash it, we're not gonna wash it. And you know, I put, they put two scratches either side. And because of the two scratches, they're, they're small. You'll, you'll see here in a little bit. We ended up taking all of the dents. We had they, a, they did it first for free, so yeah, that's they not did too it. Bad. So they swapped out dents for, I don't want I didn't want them painting it, because painting, uh, whatever. Um, what else on the inside? These seats are so wide and they have such thick leather on them with the Charity Pro stitching on the back. It's one of the most comfortable seats you can get. Yeah, they're really comfortable for... for super wide um, and just... Long distance cruising. Like they're, airplane seats, super wide. Airplane just, seat pleats, they're horrible. No, like the captain seat, not captain. Yes. The seats in the cockpit. The cockpit seats. All right, so uh, I can say that I'm an expert in uh, flying and the most comfortable seat on an aircraft is the two front flight deck seats. They're made to not cramp. They're made of specific foam that makes you not cramp and you're always comfortable. Always comfortable. I mean, I've, I haven't sat, so I've flown, let's see what airplanes have I flown. Um, DC-9, Airbus, 319, 320, 321, 757, 767. Uh, CRJ Embraer. Embraers, the, all the Embraers except for the, for the bigger, newer stuff. I've flown uh, the ATR ATR seventy two and the Saab and the Saab. So and soon, hopefully, seven thirty seven. But anyways, the most comfortable seats on an aircraft are the two flight deck seats. There's Those nothing are expensive too. There's yeah. nothing as far as comfort, and the seats are very similar to that. They really are. You can sit. It doesn't. You don't get cramps. You don't get cramps. Back doesn't hurt. Back doesn't look, hurt. Look how big these rests are. Look how big that is very similar to, to airplane flight deck seats it really is it uh thick leather they're super wide yeah super wide you, just... you know you, you would think so now i'm on the 7576 so it's very similar to the to the seven oh it's the same the it's colorado the same road trip is about 12 hours there and back on the way back i stayed in this chair for seven hours and it didn't hurt at all it was so comfortable just exactly like this and it was so comfortable yeah it doesn't it, no it doesn't really form any hot spots um, it doesn't have cooling or heated seats. But it's not needed because of the design of these seats. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, the, the, you know, we're in Colorado and it was like, what, zero degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit, freezing, and I got in the seat and I didn't think. No. It heated up pretty quickly, I don't know. Natural leather, I don't know if, you know, leather made in China. Some cars have leather made in China, like fake leather. Um, those when you get them, that you feel the cold. You really, really feel the cold. I just love how thick this th these leather is. It's gonna last you forever, <laughs> or a good amount, not forever, but longer than super thin leather seats. Yeah. I like about this truck. It has like ten cup holders just in the front half of the truck. That's kind of nice. Okay, guys, this is a quick overview of all the mods that we did on it. Um, highly recommend that you do this. It took us about three hours, and we've never so oh, I've sewed a little bit, but. Never did sewing before, leather or anything like that. Comes with a $40 kit off Amazon. Link will be in the description below. I highly recommend you check it out. Yeah, we did all this, all this. We sewed all this. All of it. Yeah, the there's stitching, a link in the description. The stitching mask mat, pretty much matches exactly all the stitching on the seats. Yeah, I highly recommend this mod. Easy to do. Took us an afternoon to do it. Um, it looks intimidating, but it really isn't, is it? No. I don't think so. Another thing is, normally these little shifter balls are like 40 bucks. And all we did was we got one off Amazon for like five bucks. We got a little Dremel. Is that what it is? No, not it's Dremel. Dremel. Yeah, we a drilled little... a hole in the yeah, middle. Yeah, this of is it. we've been doing this ever since almost all of our cars, just doing our own custom shift knot thing. We oh, um, it. <laughs> yeah, we just put a hole in it and then press fitted it on. Um, it's really nice, and it feels a lot better than the brick that was there before. <laughs> Another thing I'd like to say, we also added a little wireless charging in between here. Yeah, the wireless charging, they, I know they, they make, 
they make now. Uh, there's a company that makes one that you can just fit it in. But it's expensive though. It's expensive. This is... 50 bucks. Not 40 bucks. Like 30 bucks. No, it was like $17. I forget. Oh. Look at the video. Uh, there's another video that we did how we installed it. Um, it just... Uh, we also... We got a little wire. Yeah, the wire goes through here. And it plugs into... Right in there. Okay. So another thing is... These little glove... Not glove these compartments are so big so we didn't need all of it so we decided to get a safe in the middle yeah a safe bolt it in you can get it out but if you really um Let's see how's it open like this yeah you have a water gun in there some, and some keys some airsoft yeah airsoft some air, yeah airsoft airsoft uh-huh airsoft yeah i wouldn't want to get shot with that airsoft but no, anyways airsoft hurts yeah, that that yeah, airsoft. Right? You could you could take it's like bolted right into the truck. You could take it out, but it's gonna take you quite a lot of effort and time. If somebody just smashes in, try to steal what they can as quickly as possible. They can't because you put your wallet in here. It's not gonna be. <coughs> All right. So what else? What else we do on the interior? Oh, uh, we added this uh, grab handle because. You'd be surprised. They didn't on the. They didn't actually have it. They didn't come with the driver's side handle and we don't really like holding onto the wheel because yeah so it wheel. just makes it nice to grab a hold they had it on that side not on this side um sides one of the good. videos that we did we added this because there's no step i don't know i don't think it looks good with a step we didn't include the step no it looks way better without it it's kind of a pain not really a pain but you have to jump in like for me since i'm not the tallest i kind of have to hold on to this and hop in because it's, it's, pre it's pretty tall like it's like stretching all the way. I yeah, think you can, but. I think it looks better without the uh, the step. So that's pretty much all the mods that we did on the inside of the truck. There's some more coming. You have to you're gonna have to subscribe to see more. But we're gonna add uh, we're gonna do two more mods, uh, electronic mods to the uh, to the truck here soon. Um, all right, so that concludes. Oh, wear and tear on the inside after 10,000 miles. It's pretty much like that before because it's it yeah. is leather. You can't perfect leather. You know, I don't know, wear and tear. They're pretty um, much, all that wrinkles is from leather. It's normally like that, and it came like that, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, overall, it's brand new. the it's plastics, like yeah, the plastics are, are pretty good that they use in here. Yeah, really Except nice You got a few scratches there. I don't know what's up with that. Got a big glove box, too. Yeah. The radio, I don't know. I don't listen to the, don't the listen, music. But it sounds pretty good. If you like radio, then sure. Yeah, yeah it's not the... I think the JBL is what they do. Um, what else? Another thing I like about this truck, it has so many... Comp oh, I have it on this side. There's so many little compartments here. Like on this side, I have a little cubby hole right here. A little cubby hole in there. I also have a bunch of storage on both sides. It's just only storage. That's why I think this is... Hey, hold up. There's a bunch of storage. That's why I recommend... This is probably the best road trip car you can get. All right, so let's talk about some exterior mods. Front and rear sway bars, we did those. Um, you can kind of see them in here. They're red sway bars. They look better than the black. Oh, it actually did have a sway bar in the front. It did I mean, have one, yeah. It weighed like five pounds and it's like nothing, so. Yeah. It's like 30 pounds. If you're gonna bar. do one sway bar, I recommend doing the front, not both. We ended up doing the front and the rear. What happens is, is you know, I don't know, maybe we'll do a separate video on that, but really quick, I'll just touch upon it. Here's the back one. Um, we'll do a separate video on that. We're gonna do some mods to it and stuff like that. I don't necessarily recommend doing both. Um, primarily because what happens is when you, when you, I think this is more for like towing and stuff like that. So if you're not gonna tow that much, um, I recommend just doing the front. Uh, that made the biggest impact. When I put the rear one on by itself, it did absolutely nothing um, as far as sway. But when I added the front one, that did the biggest, the biggest. Um... Another thing I'd like to add, comes with really good looking rims. They might change them, but for now they're good. I like them. Yeah, I like these tires. The Michelin, LTXA slash T2. Squared. Two, the power of two. Power of two. Yeah. Um, like I said, they, were, they ran really well um, 
on the ice and in the snow up in Colorado. Uh, what else? Oh, the exhaust. We're gonna have here in the next couple days the uh, tonneau cover. Absolutely love it. Um, Looks clean. It works well. You can take it off and store it somewhere else. I like it. I like it. We've had this thing on for a year now. We recommend it. Uh, let's see what else we did. We did to the inside. We added this you know, uh, carpet. We didn't get um, bed rug. We didn't get um, spray and bed liner because that stuff is rough and it hurts. And here are the little yeah, it's got LED, like lights. LED lighting on the inside that lights up the uh, the back of the bed at night uh, fully. You don't need any more than that. Um, what are the mods we did? Oh, the uh, we added the lights. Brighter. Got a special yeah, we did a video on that um, on the LEDs. I know people are gonna go like, well, I guess you know we got to start changing up the LEDs and making it more brighter and all that. Uh, the, the the problem with that is they don't work. Um, we did a video on that. Uh, maybe I'll link it in the description down below. Right now, as of what is this, December uh, 2019, nobody has. LED bulbs that you can just put in there, plug and play. They're all, uh, you have to cut up the wires and, uh, and stuff like that in order to put them on there. So I have not found any kind of LED that fits without chopping up the, um, the wires. Of course, you know, when you start chopping up wires, uh, all the corrosion from winter, um, uh, salt spray and stuff like that gets in there. The other thing is the exhaust. This is actually not a fake two-part exhaust or two-piece exhaust. It's actually a real, here it is. This is a special TRD Pro dual exhaust. It's not a fake dual exhaust like Mazda or something. And it goes through the whole entire truck as a two-piece. And it sounds really nice. And since it has black tips, so it matches the black bumper and other black parts on the Mustang. The mu <laughs> called it a Mustang on the Tundra. The Special Fox shocks. You can't really see them, but so you can see Fox right there. They're really nice, and I recommend getting this truck. I mean, I don't know what to say. They're a lot more rigid than normal, than normal shocks, but they look cool and they feel pretty nice. I know for um, 2020 now they're offering the Voodoo Blue in the standard one. Um, <laughs> you know, I say don't buy it, but it. It is, I, you have to see it in real life. You can't just base, you know, um, the color off of what you see on the, on the screen because it's not the same. I mean, I, I know I own the truck and I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> I've seen plenty of videos of my truck that I posted and they don't look the same, not even close. Uh, you gotta see it in person if you're looking at a Voodoo Blue uh, color for yourself for 2020. Two things in the front, the rigid fog lights, these yes. light the ditches, they're really bright. Yeah, I highly recommend getting a set of those. Those are, um, I don't know, I can't say any more about them. They're just awesome at lighting up the ditches. The other thing is in the front is this is like a special thing that helps with cruise control and you can keep it at a certain distance from a car. It's kind of like, and if the car slows down, I think all the way to 15 miles an hour, then it'll disengage. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of those systems that I had some problems with it uh, last year. I actually took it in because it wouldn't connect or something like that. I know they've had a lot of problems. They've had a recalls or not like like a hush hush recall. You I haven't really heard a full on recall about it, but they've had problems with, with those. And I don't know if they fixed them for 2020, but I know they had problems in 2019 seem and I had them. problems with it, but now it works. It's junk. I mean, I wish they wouldn't have put it in there, but whatever. That's just- It also stops your car. Yeah, in it, extra safety, it blah, blah, blah. It'll stop. Whatever. Just don't hit the car in front of you, right? The other thing is hood scoop. It's a fake hood scoop because if it was a real hood scoop, they said it'll impact reliability. Yeah, whatever. I don't. I wish they wouldn't have put it on there because it's not like necessary. It. Yeah, he he likes it because it, 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 it differentiates the 2018 to 2019 TRD Pros. Yeah. 2017 last year. 2017, 2019. Whatever. I don't like it because it's fake. And why? <laughs> why did they put it on there? Um. Oh. Another problem that I've had with this truck, and I think that maybe I should have it tested. I know I know somebody that has a tester, but I think this paint is really thin. 
really thin on these trucks. Um, yeah, I want to show you some examples here real quick. Let me show you this right here. See this? How you can see in here um, how it just rubs off on the wall. And I'll show you some pictures of the wall in the, in the garage. Um, I think this paint is super, super thin. It scratches very easily. Um, let me see here. Where was that scratch? See the scratch right here? This is what, what they added to my uh, truck when they washed it. There's a similar scratch just like that. I know every single scratch and ding and dent on this truck. Uh, there's no dings on it now anymore because they took them all out. But, um, so check out the paint, right? It's really, really thin. I think it, it chips really easily. Um, I don't know, 10,000 miles. That's why I recommend you guys getting clear raw paint protection on it. Yeah, I didn't do that because, I don't know, I'm cheap. No, we're not cheap. I just, I don't know. But I think this paint is really, really thin. See, check it out how easily. These are all my scratches. I don't know. I don't know how these got here. We thought the cat did it, but I don't think, you know. Cat. Yeah, I don't want to blame the cat for something it didn't do. But anyways, uh, I think the paint is really, really thin. It scratches super easily. I think normally, I don't know if that comes out. You can see the scratches there in the corner right in here. Um, it scratches super easily. You know, I don't even know how, how I got these. Uh, there's another one in here. Where did I see it? Right here. You're going to go, oh, but it's a truck and, you know, you take it off-road. I didn't take this truck. Have you, have you been, have you taken it off-roading? Maybe we should do an off-roading. Maybe and have you demo it, driving off-road. Um. The thing I like to say about it, don't worry about the paint. Drive it as much as you want. If it gets scratches, it's what it is. Yeah, that's how I basically took it. That's why I didn't put a clear bar on there. And now Doesn't I face matter. the consequences of dings. But, you know, whatever. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know. I can't, I can't put diapers on the truck, right? Um, this is that that lower uh, protector. You see how it's all oily? Check this out, right? Look at how greasy and oily it looks. All from them. When they took the filter out, they weren't careful and they, I mean, it's all greasy and slimy now. And to change the sway bar, you have to take this big, big panel off. It weighs a lot. That's the only problem we really had. It's like 12... 15 screws that take the panel off, but it weighs like 20 pounds and it's really heavy to lift it up. To yeah, that was the hardest part of, of, of installing this. Uh, Putting uh, it back on. The TRD. Yeah, yeah his, this. Like, this was it. hard. I don't know. Also, we don't have the, uh, the step on the side, which I don't think, I don't know. Steps are for ladders, right? Um, I can get in there pretty easily. What do you think? It's not like impossible to get it. You just have to take a bigger step. I don't really care about that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to put a ladder on the side of the truck. It doesn't look aesthetically correct, I don't think. Another uh, mod we did was, and this one is I highly recommend. We change this, the blinker. Uh, we'll put a uh, link in the description down below. Uh, the other video that we did, highly recommend that. That is, let me see if I can get them to flash. Uh, that is highly recommended. It only costs seventeen dollars or so. See the way they flash? They're super bright compared to the garbage that was in there before. Easy to do. It took us what? Uh, no, not that long at all. It's super easy. Pop the hood up, reach in, twist and pull. Take the LED out, put the new one, twist and push it in. Close the hood, you're done. Yeah, the whole thing took us what? 15 minutes yeah filming and editing and everything with everything <laughs> with everything it, it probably took five minutes to do without filming and stuff yeah like they're like literally 100 times brighter than the garbage that they had in there um again that's the only led that i changed on the front and on the back was the the top um i put brighter leds up there all right, as I have my little lovely assistant here showing, the uh, one of the things that Toyota got right for this particular truck, more so than any other, more so than Ford or Chevy or any of those clowns, um, what this car is really awesome at is the turning radius of the truck. Uh, it is within a foot or two of the, um, the only car I can compare to the one I have is the RX 350 uh, from Lexus. Literally, within a foot or two. 
of the of the turning radius of a sedan or SUV sedan. Um, it is incredible. I mean, I'm sitting here. He is, I don't know, the back of the truck is, I don't know, I say 10 feet away from me. So he's doing a circle that's about, what, 25 feet round, maybe, with the outer edge of the truck. Incredible. I mean, this alone is, is, is I mean, I, I can't even... I can't put this to words really what it means to drive something that's got such a tight turning radius in the city. Um, wouldn't you say, buddy? Oh, yeah. It's incredible, like how short of a of a of a um, of a um, circle you can do in turning it around and maneuvering in parking lots and stuff like that. You can't really experience the turning radius without driving it for yourself. How like does it turn compared to the Mustang or the? Uh, this, other... this turns better than the Mustang. The Mustang is a garbage turning circle. The biggest thing I like about this truck is the space in the back in these seats. They're super comfortable, the plush, thick of leather. Oh, yeah. And? That's, you can sleep in the back. That's why we have a pillow back there. Most trucks don't have a big rear window thing, like a little hole in the back. Well, oh, yeah. some trucks have very, very small windows in the back. Well, to Toyota was like, that's lame, so there. The whole entire thing goes back. <laughs> if you can't crawl out of it, then it's not really worth it. Yeah, it, 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 uh... Here, turn, turn it back up. Uh-huh. When, when you roll all the windows down and roll that back window down all the way, it's pretty much like a convertible. It's such a weird feeling to be in this truck. It's not really like a convertible, but close as you can get. Yeah. Yeah, and this, you know, people that say that, you know, um, what do you call it? Toyota are, are, are not made American, built American, and all that cool stuff. Dude, check this out. This thing was built in the country of Texas. What? How many trucks are built in the country of Texas? Texas is by far the best country to live in, I think, isn't it? Uh-huh. Built in Texas, man. By Texans for Texans. The seat is all the way back, and look how much room you have. Yeah, oh, yeah. So all let me. All the way back, it's really Yeah, really I'm far back. six foot three. Don't mind the shoes, those are very, very expensive shoes. Um, so, six foot three and a half. The seat is and I have, exit, so it's very leaned back and everything. Yeah, so that's how I usually. Yeah, seats all the way back. Look how much room is in here. It's, it's incredible. Uh, the amount of room. A lot of headroom, too. Yeah, plenty of headroom. I mean, I'm slouching over. It's great. Absolutely fantastic, wouldn't you say? Uh-huh. I still, I love this truck. So much room. Ultimate road trip car. In conclusion, if you want an everyday driver truck with a lot of room and good reliability, I recommend the Tundra. All right. So the reason why I, I bought new instead of used, yeah, this truck is 58,000, 56, I can't remember. 58,000 with everything. Yeah, whatever. 57, tax title license, 58. No, it doesn't 58. matter. It's a lot of money. $60,000 for, for a truck like this is just absolutely insane. I don't care who you are, what you are, what you think. But anyways, the reason I bought new is I went out and looked. You know, the cheapest I found, I was looking for, I found at Copart, a 2017. Um, can Tierty Pro? 2017, I forget what color it was. Anyways, whatever, it wasn't Voodoo Blue. Uh, 2017 TRD Pro uh, wrecked, totaled at Copart. Uh, I think it was a rollover. Maybe not. It was, let's just say it was trash. It was trash. The coal car was trashed. And it sold at Copart for $28,000. Now you do the math. $28,000 for a trashed truck. And this was brand new, a sixty. So, like, like it's it, it, it's just a big joke, right? Like, like especially the 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 Tacomas. You know, half a million miles, rolled over three times, ten thousand dollars. You know, I mean, what? They just charge a lot of money. It costs a lot of money for a used one. So even, I just I just went out and sucked it up and bought a new even one. A this is be the only car that I have that would be brand new. Even period. a high mileage wrecked car, they're still insane amount of money. And they really are. So I bought new, and if you're looking at this video, you're probably looking, trying to figure out what to do, right? Do you get a used one? Do you get a new one? You do the math. They, they just want too much money for a four-wheel drive Tundra, or Tacoma for that matter. They want insane money. It's crazy. I'm not paying that. It's just cheaper just to buy a brand new one, and it's yours, and that's why I got new. But Mustang, <laughs> 
and all the other cars at, at video for another time. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed that video, this video. We're gonna have some more stuff coming out with um, um, independent videos that we're gonna do with the tonneau cover, the front and rear sway bars, and uh, we're gonna have some more mods coming out here soon. Uh, we're gonna do a couple electric mods to the truck that I think that are necessary. Um, anyways, guys, we'll see you on the next video.